Hey everybody, welcome back. Oh. So quiet. Crank it! You crank that roll glide. Haha, <laughs> okay, anyway, thanks for watching. Um We've had about six Eden randoms in a row. This could be seven. No, not quite. It was <laughs> it's really just Lazarus Eden. Eden. Eden, Lazarus, Eden, Eden, Lazarus, Lazarus. W pass 2, DVC. Shouldn't have used the pill right off the bat, but hey, it's, uh, you know, we're living in a new era here. Doing something mean with it. Doing it better than anybody ever seen do it. How do you play a Lazarus? Hold on, I'm trying to center myself. It's like a, a, a heavy workout, you know? An Isaac episode is a real mental one rep max. You gotta warm up first. How do you warm up? You get the old throat, the pharynx, starting to, you know, fire on all cylinders. You talk about Isaac. Whoops, 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 whoops. You say, what do we have to do to succeed here? Oh, is Lazarus? Well, you want to die early so you can get the uh, bonus, statistically speaking. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you have some HP to recover after you get hit. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in a world of hurt. And then, 10 seconds later, we start talking about, Hey, did you hear that that UK chain bought the Cineplex chain? This is a very Canadian slash British bit. <laughs> Did you hear, actually, I'm not gonna, I haven't been in the movies in a while. Um, but did you hear that the Playmobil movie, which I believe when, I think it was when Caden and I saw Toy Story 4, there was a trailer for the Playmobil movie that aired in front of it. And I just thought to myself, like, I get it, the Lego movie was really successful, and also, like, critically acclaimed. You're the Playmobil Corporation, you're like, we can do that too. It's not that hard. Turns out it is that hard. The movie is critically not well received. And also, I, the, the stat I saw from this weekend is that the Playmobil movie made less in 1,500 theaters than Adam Sandler's new film. And I don't mean that in an insulting way because it's directed by the Softy Brothers who also made... A good time. They're probably some of the most exciting young filmmakers around today. Um, but Adam Sandler's new film, Uncut Gems, made more money in five theaters. With one three hundredth the reach, it made more money than the Playmobil movie made in 1,500 theaters, which is just... It's a stat that is truly astounding. Anyway, suffice it to say... <laughs> I don't know. The the movie right now strikes me as such a uh, such a bomb that people don't even know how much of a bomb it is. If that makes sense, people uh, normally they're like, oh well, you always think of stuff like you know Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. It costs so much money and it made so little. Yeah, but you ha it's like the Johnny Depp line. But you have heard of me, Playmobil movie. You're like I didn't even know it existed. People always and you know. This is just the internet. It's not, I shouldn't say people, I suppose, but they always say things like, I didn't even know the movie existed. How is it supposed to g make money when you don't even know it exists? There was advertising for this movie. It's just, you know, don't take this the wrong way. If you're going to see, like, you know, Knives Out or you're going to go see The Lighthouse, you're probably not going to get, I honestly think we have to do this to save ourselves. You're probably not going to get a trailer for a movie aimed at the seven-year-old demographic in front of that. I just, you know, there's a, there's a little growing up period that, that everybody has to do. And it, it usually happens, I would say, in your early adult years. Where you realize, for the first time, not everything is made for you. And I don't mean that to be a pompous thing to say, but you know. I, you know, I'd be like 17 years old and I see a trailer for a kid's movie and I'd be like, that looks stupid. And you're like, yeah, it looks stupid. You're halfway through your bachelor's of science and the movie is aimed at people that were born, you know, like 15 years after you were born. You're, it's not meant for you, dude. It's meant for... <laughs> it's meant for families 
with small children who want an air-conditioned place to go during the summertime. And also, some easy merchandise for those holiday sales. I've been thinking about movies, though, over the past 24 hours. Because uh, Mathis popped into the Discord. He said, hey, I know I'm late to the party. Which he's not, by the way. Like, maybe slightly, but not really. He said, but I saw Midsummer. I thought it was very good. I said, Mathis, I knew you were a man of taste. Midsummer is probably my second favorite movie of 2019. Um, I... It was my favorite for a long time, but to be honest, I can't deny that that Parasite is, uh... Don't hit me, dude! I can't deny that that Parasite is an actual, um, masterpiece that is definitely, like, on the list of my favorite movies of the decade. So that, that surpasses a merely good... Year for film, if that makes sense. Let me out, dude. Man, I hate this right now. Hold on, this requires... I don't even know if we're going to be able to get a deal with the devil because it's a tiny room, but it's the thought that counts, I suppose. Okay, we did get one. Maybe we'll get enough deals to invoke the Lazarus Principle. We will indeed. <laughs> modestly spicy, but whatever. It's probably worth doing. Um, anyway. And if you disagree, by the way, that's fine. Just, you know, tell me what it's like to be wrong. No, I'm not like I'm not that kind of guy. But we were talking about movies a little bit, and uh, Justin popped in and was like, I gotta see all these movies, but I don't know what happened to my brain. I used to enjoy watching, you know, all these movies, but now, whenever I get the chance to watch something on Netflix, I just put on something I've already seen before. Let me out, dude. One hit and we're dead. No? Some of these hits and we're dead. Let me put it that way. It's alright, we got HP backing us up when we leave here, but... Very dangerous, temporarily. <laughs> Was it worth it? I can't really uh, perceive of a situation where that could make any sense. Anyway, um... And I, I was thinking about it, and I was like, man, that really resonates with me. Because I'm kind of in the same boat. Like, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people out there are in a similar boat as well. But, you know, that's one of the reasons I like going to the movie theater. Is because, you know, you turn off your phone, it's dark, there's no distractions. I mean, if you go to the movie theater and you, like, constantly check your phone, why even go to the movies, you know? You're just you're annoying people around you. People always concoct situations that are just nonsensical. What if you're a doctor on call and there's an urgent- Okay, sure! <laughs> yeah. Alright, so approximately one out of every 2,500 people has a really good excuse um, for, for using their phone during the movies. But anyway, suffice it to say, it's more like it's, it's a me thing. I, I kind of like being forced to watch a film quietly with like no distractions around. Um, and I, I don't, it's not like a lack of discipline, it's more like a lack of like desire to do it uh, at home. And that's honestly like, I really want to see Marriage Story, and I really want to see The Irishman. They're both on Netflix, very readily accessible, staring me in the face every time I open the app. But I just can't bring myself to like sit on the couch for three hours and watch The Irishman, which I know makes no sense. Um, and I can't bring myself to put The Irishman on my other monitor while I play the Forza Battle Royale. Because <laughs> then it just leads to these situations, oh, pardon me, got a little horse there. Leads to these situations where, you know, after you watch the movie, you're like, eh, what'd you think of it? You're like, ah, it's okay. I thought it was pretty good. Because you don't remember anything. You, you didn't let yourself get immersed. So as bizarre as it sounds, I feel like I I almost would rather go to the movie theater to watch The Irishman than watch it at home. Because, you know, I, and this is, uh, not everybody's in the same boat, but you know, man, we've had chocolate milk so much recently. Uh, not everybody's in the same boat, I'm sure, but like, you know, you might be home uh, and then... You know, you get a little bit, you know, it's kind of a slow but necessary part of the movie. And you're like, oh, you know what? I gotta take the garbage out. You pause the game, you take the garbage out. 
Pause, pause the movie, I should say. Take the garbage out. Then you're like, oh, you know, like, uh, oh, my mom was supposed to call me this afternoon. All of a sudden, you know, you take a call from your mom. It takes you eight hours to watch this three-hour-long movie. I'm, I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, I will admit, but... I'm just saying, that's, that's one of the reasons I like going to the movie theater. You're kind of forced to pay attention, if that makes sense. I don't have, like, a... Like, like a hyperactivity strain in my body. Like, I don't... People assume that I get bored very easily. It's not the case, dude. Like, I, I can sit down and read. I can sit down and watch something as well. It's just making the choice to sit down and watch something at home. When I could be, uh, you know, racking up Tetris wins. Is <laughs> pretty... Uh, it's a tough decision to make. I'm very glad, by the way, that we did not go to the curse room. This is an XL floor, okay. If we had gone to the curse room, whoop, we would be in a very spiced situation right now. We might risk our deal with the devil chance, and to be honest, I mean, this being an XL floor, usually the third series, or well, I should, the third and fourth floor, are, uh, are a very um, important series of floors in and of themselves. But then on top of that, the fact that it's an XL floor here is a big deal. So, what do we need? Really comes down to stats. You know, like, Little Brim is, is very nice. And we've actually gotten a lot of very nice items. Um, chocolate milk is really good. Honestly, Euthanasia is pretty good. And also feeds into Spun, which is a nice little... Statistical bonus if we can spin it. I don't even have to say pun intended. It's the same word. So really all I'm going to say is sorry. Just want to focus for a moment here. Let's see what we get on this deal with the devil. I'm not too scared of a oh, Gertie Jr. Okay. I am petrified of a Gertie Jr. And now it's dead. Uh, we'll definitely want the magic scab, but we might not want it until we see what we get from a deal with the devil. And we don't need it immediately to beat this guy, so we'll just, we'll slow our roll here. Okay, that's very lucky. It is Krampus, so that, that doesn't change our parameters too much. We want the items we wanted to begin with. Um, and this is not gonna help us out when it comes to getting Dark Prince's crown to work, but that's okay. That's okay. Don't spin me right round like a record, baby, okay? I need, or like desperately would like at least, to keep this uh, eternal heart alive. Lemon Party is fine. So we definitely do want Blood Clot for the damage. Then HP plus luck. Alright, we still have one more item room to go to. And it should have two choices. Anyway, if you if you don't know what I'm talking about... Uh, excuse me, where's my two choices? I'm taking it either way, but... If you don't know what I'm talking about, I think that's fair, but like... You know, you have a different experience when you actually sit down and like watch a movie in a non-distracted context versus... Yeah, I had it on while I was like you know, doing the dishes, and I thought it was okay. Like, in particular, movie, and this is just my two cents, but movies that, you know, they they kind of rely on tone or, or tension or something like that, and the obvious example, because it's recent, is, is, you know, something like Midsummer. If you watch that movie in, a, in the context where you can take a break from the tension that the movie has, you're going to have a different experience, I think. You might still hate it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But you're, I think you're going to have a much different experience than, you know, someone in the movie theater had where they were watching it and they felt, like, constricted and, like, you and these other 50 people in the auditorium are like, you're on for a, a serious ride, you know? And you, oh, I didn't think they would take it there. Dank Depths XL. It's a lot of XL floors, dude. But we are on pace. Anyway. So what I should do is uh, make time to watch the stuff I want to watch because that leads to the most enriching experiences, you know? 
What I will do instead, in all likelihood, is go... Well, I don't want to watch good things with divided attention, so continue to put on trash TV and trash movies. Um... Thank you. And grind out those Tetris Invictus wins at the same time. <laughs> Although I will say, I did watch on Netflix. Um, well, I got a couple of pieces of media to bring up to you. And I, you know, one of them is a little early, but I watched Hail Satan, the documentary about the, the Church of Satanism uh, on Netflix. And I found it uh, very, very interesting. And that's not me just trying to stay, like, non-controversial. I had, I had a friend who was a, a, a Satanist in high school, and I, you know, my personal take on, you know, his interpretation of it was that he wanted attention and was an atheist. So he was like, no, I'm not atheist, I'm a Satanist. Isn't that wacky? And I, in watching the documentary, I was like, you know what? That was an ignorant take of mine. In actuality, like, look. I don't live in the United States, but some of the stuff they show in that documentary, I'm like, I could totally see, um, you know, why someone would... Oh, I didn't mean to hit that. Why someone would um, become a part of that religion, or, you know, that collective, if you will, in order to, you know, fight for values that they feel are, are relevant. I thought it was... I thought it was a fun... Oh, you son of a gun. I thought it was a fun documentary that was also enlightening. So I would recommend that. Moreover, I mean, it's not the greatest documentary ever made, but it is interesting. Let's put it that way. Um, moreover, I watched episode one of The Expanse because it comes highly regarded. Um, I had no idea, and it's only, I've only seen episode one, right? I don't know that I, I was kind of under the impression that it was like Farscape. <laughs> like with creatures, uh, you know, and, you know, weird pointy-eared aliens and stuff like that, but, uh... Imagine my surprise when I was watching it. In the first episode, I was like, dude, this is just Shadowrun. Ah! I was, I was very impressed. It wasn't like I had turned up my nose at, at the concept of The Expanse. But I'll tell you, actually, you know, it's exactly like that, because it was previously on the Sci-Fi Network, and... You know, when I think of... Oh, sorry, what's it called in... No, it's called Sci-Fi... In America, right? Or Sifi? <laughs> and now it's, uh... In Canada, it was previously known as the Space Network. Not a joke. Anyway, um... I, previously, you know, I had thought of that network as like, uh... Hey, we get good science fiction shows from other networks once they've been cancelled. And also, we have our own original stuff and it's all Sharknado-esque quality. Um... So imagine my surprise. This was like a legitimate, you know, sincere attempt at, at quality programming. I know it's on Amazon Prime now. How do you think I watched it? Thank you, Jeffrey. As always. Whoop. Anyway, so I now I'm I'm full. I got stuff to watch. I'm watching the expanse. Are you ever going to watch Dark? It's a good science fiction television program your friends keep recommending to you. I will, okay? Honestly, I will. But now I got four seasons of The Expanse to get through. And they're 45 episodes per... Or 45 minutes per episode. I don't know how many episodes per season. <laughs> Might take a bit. Get off my back, okay? You, you already know my piece on that anyway. I don't mean to insult our good friend, Apollo. Oh, check it, dude. Uh, because I think I'm kind of the weird one here. But I don't like being recommended new pieces of media. Because I'm like, you're just going to get mad when I don't watch it in a timely fashion. I don't mean to be... Because, uh... I, you know, as a teenager, I, I lived that life. Where I would hear, oh, the new Love Montreal album came out. You gotta listen to this. And then if they don't reply after like a half hour, you're like, are you listening to it yet? But I just kind of like, you know, I got over it. And now I'm like, dude, people are busy. Every album's good. <laughs> Every th We're in an era of prestige television. It's all great, dude. 
Got a limited time on this, on God's blue marble, you know what I mean? Gotta, you gotta make choices. And how am I supposed to play so much Forza Horizon 4? If I also have to watch a show with subtitles that requires me to read. I don't mind reading the subtitles. Did I, do, do I have to remind you? Favorite movie of uh, 2019 is reading subtitles. I'm just saying. It, it means you can't have divided attention. So like, you know, when I was still in class, sometimes I'd be doing homework. And Kate would be like, do you want me to put something on? And then I'd be like, sure. And then she put on something like in Japanese with English subtitles. And I'm like, well, I guess my, my background noise is just Japanese today. Because <laughs> I don't speak Japanese. But also, I can't read the subtitles because I got to, you know, figure out how to write this, uh, this program that converts Roman numerals into Arabic numerals. Anyway, suffice it to say, we will not be going to boss rush here. And that's, you know, there is a, there's a great deal of irony involved in this episode right now. Because it is a man who makes background noise, which is essentially how I see my job. Um, talking about how he uses other things as background noise, but he doesn't want to use good media as background noise because then he wouldn't appreciate it. So he only wants to use trash media as background noise. So in effect, am I not calling my own media trash? Hold on now. I didn't say that. You said that. Did we not go... I'm so stupid, dude. There's options and more options are two different things here. For some reason, despite having gone to the boss fights on the last floor, I was under the impression that we were going to get two items from the item room. Or the choice of two items, rather. My bad. My bad. Oh, baby. Death. Death. We'll stop there, but I was hoping for a different card. I was hoping for something that could help us, uh, you know, get a little further. You know, maybe an Emperor or a Sun card or something like that, but whatever. What's done is done. I didn't really call it out, but I'm I'm very stoked to have gotten eight inch nails. Very good damage augmenter for us. Speaking of which, <laughs> also a very good damage augmenter for us. And with chocolate milk, we got a we got a real nice thing going here. They're synergizing mildly but nicely with with euthanasia here. Um, if we're gonna beat the odds and get a deal with the devil, you know, it, it seems like. We got a chance at it. We're, we're not likely to get hit two more times on this fight right here. Didn't beat the odds, but that's okay. There is a Tinted Rock as well. Take me down. Now, I gotta tell you, dude, I'm also like... So, I started this Northern Lion Tries series, and it's been a great time so far. Um, but I also feel... By the way, thanks for your support on it. I also feel like I've made a grave error starting a series that relies on new game releases for, for fodder uh, in the month of December. I, you know, I've been around the industry for a long time. I recognize in December, releases uh, slow down. They tend to, you know, AAA releases at least tend to peak in, in frequency and also not quality, but like, that's the word I'm looking for. Ambition, maybe, in like, uh, you know, October and November. That's usually when the big AAA releases tend to come out. It has pivoted a little bit. Like now, there's kind of like, there's a little peak in the spring. And then there's a sustained level of like, you know, widespread uh, mainstream new releases in the summer as well. But traditionally, you know, that kind of Call of Duty corridor in October, November is when the... Big new releases come out, but I was like, ah, you know, I'm covering indie games. Indie games come out at all times of the year. Apparently, I was mistaken. <laughs> um, it, and I'm not saying there's been no games, because that's just ridiculous. But um, the, I've been scouring the, the various video game storefronts for compelling releases, um, you know, over the course of the past few days. Despite, and I don't, this this is very insulting, but I'm just going to say it. You know, 
I don't mean to insult a, a medium that I don't really... Like, I, it's the the caveat is so easy. Or let me re rephrase this here. Hold on. I still think we want this, even though we could get closer to spun. Uh, I don't think we want either of those, so we'll head down. I don't mean to be rude to game developers. They're working hard. They got a very, you know, incredible skill set. They're more talented than I am in this department, for sure. Without a doubt. However, the ratio on Steam of... New releases to compelling new releases is so low. And it's different depending on what your tastes are, I will admit. But, uh... Like, over the weekend... There were probably 50 new games that came out on Steam. I scrolled through all of them twice and was like... I don't see anything here that could work. Once you, and you know, don't take this the wrong way. But <laughs> once you cut out story-driven anime visual novels, which if you like them, more power to you. And boy, oh boy, do I suggest that you go to Steam's new releases page uh, four times a day in case you're ever uh, in need of some more of them. Uh, once you filter those out because they're not a fit for, you know, either my personality or my content, um, you know, then you've got, like, obvious, this is my first game sort of stuff, where you're like, hey, I don't mean you any harm, but this is not, you know, this is not up to snuff for, like, a, you know, a polished release. And then you got stuff like, there's a whole subgenre of stuff on Steam, which is bad games, but the name is a joke, so people give it positive reviews. Uh, ironically, it's, it's very strange to me in a part of internet culture I've obviously missed out on. Like, there's a whole host of games on Steam that are, are like, themed around Vladimir Putin. And they they all look absolutely horrible. And I don't mean like, you know, oh, I didn't... Stylistically, I don't like the direction. I mean, they look like, you know, Tomo Quest. But they all have positive reviews and they're like, oh, praise be to a glorious leader, Vladimir Putin. I got... And I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I get it, but it, I don't... I guess I find the joke kind of lazy, I suppose. It's like, you know, why make a good game when you could make a bad game and give it a meme title and still get, you know, 25 positive reviews. I mean, you're not making money hand over fist, I'm just saying. Boys, do not fight. I gave you wet food. Just hit the snooze button on the fight, please. I beg you. There's the, you you want for nothing in this life right now. You had your wet food. You got your nap time. I should not have stood there. Dude, I really want to try to get this deal. Oh, you son of a gun. You ruined it right as I was speaking about it. How dare you? How dare you? Sorry, you're getting great explosivo shots at least. Obviously no deal with the devil. I mean, we're going to be fine, probably, but... Let me rephrase. We should not lose this at all. Um, we have uh, pretty great stats. Might seem like our rate of fire is bad, but that's honestly just because of chocolate milk. Our rate of fire is actually fantastic. And if you need proof, like, we have number one. So, like, by definition... When you filter it through the chocolate milk lens, we're doing fine. Don't need the bombs. My sons, why, why you meow, you meow and meow. There is no need to meow. Your, your wants and your needs in this life are covered. I have you. I've got you. I won't let anything happen to you. Steady supply of canned fish-based food products. You eat like an old British sailor. What is there to complain about? <laughs> okay, shouldn't be getting hit there, but you're gonna drop HP. Thank you. We should be set. Oh! 
<laughs> I will say, my, my tolerance for dead ends in this game is hitting like an all-time low. I'm reaching like real galaxy brain hours where I'm like, they should just give you a map when you get to the womb one. I don't know, that seems a little much, but, you know, I can't deny it would be nice. You know what? We got golden keys. Why not? Why not? We also have two luck. I would expect, at this point, two luck is, uh... Impress. Two luck is, is probably enough... That was unfortunate. On the average chest, let's say you do 12 rooms, I bet two luck gives you uh, three extra items, which is a pretty solid, you know, boon for us. Um, and honestly, like, this cathedral is going way worse than I anticipated, so I feel like I, I'm not gonna turn up my nose at just about anything right now. Yikes. Walked right into that one. So I'm hoping with the uh, Explosivo, that was a dodge and a half right there, boys. I'm hoping with Explosivo, this guy's basically already yeeted. You hear this, man? My small furry son? Why, why the such mournful meows? My, we got two different cats. I mean, in case it's not abundantly clear. Tomo, he chills all day. He's like, you want to be in your office? That's cool. Mind if I hang out? No? All right, I'm just going to sleep here for a bit. Ruka, he sleeps, but when he wants your attention, he's like, if I don't have your attention immediately, I'm going to freaking die. Two very different personalities. Okay, I got to be honest with you. My previous level of hubris started to come crashing down a little bit. We're one hit away from death. Don't do me like that, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Don't go breaking my heart, please. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So you're saying there's a chance. I mean, straight up, I would love to uh, be on the blue baby fight. I think Blue Baby has less of a chance to hit us than the average room at this stage of the game. Like, this room is relatively inconsequential. Thank you. Sure, that... Oh, I didn't even see the troll bomb. Well, we did find the secret room. I really would like to get uh, the virus, but it's obviously not happening. Uh, Empress, Hierophant, okay, so did we get saved? I don't think I would describe it as getting saved, but we definitely got a pretty huge help there. I appreciate it, of course. It, it would have been... I mean, and now we're, we're pretty much set, but... This... Oh! No, don't, no, 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 relax, 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 you're doing fine, you're doing fine, drop a half heart, please, you dropped a half heart, that's exactly what we needed, okay, so you get in here, pop the Empress, and just start inundating with Monstro's Tooth, and by Monstro's Tooth, I mean Brass Knuckles, and uh, by Brass Knuckles, I mean Explosivo. Anyway, so with that in mind, thanks for watching. <laughs> hope you've enjoyed the episode. Please get me out of here. Thanks for watching. hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!